All right, we're preparing to work on Let's Do It 7 from the notes and let's forge on ahead using that framework that Rice provides for us. So we have a chemical reaction. It starts with some HI placed into a container and it's decomposing. You notice that they did not give us the reaction this time. So my little signs are in the wrong place. So we've got HI decomposing. The only thing HI can decompose to form are its elements, which is I2 and H2, and we do need to balance that. So there's our chemical reaction. We're given the temperature there. May or may not use that temperature, but if it's often stated just to kind of be politically correct because K's change with temperature. So it's very common to give a temperature there. We have two moles in a one liter container. Now, we don't have volume to volume, so there's no dilution. We have a gas, no stoichiometry involved. So we can jump right in and work with our rice grid. Now, if we have two moles per liter, that's a pretty straightforward calculation of two molar HI. No indication that there's any other source of I2 and H2. It's an equilibrium, so I don't know what the change is going to be, but I know I have to lose reactant and form product because there's no product. So you have to go towards the direction in which there's zero of that substance there. So since these have coefficients of one, I like to call those X. That avoids using fractions. We could certainly have called this X, then this would have been one half X and one half X. But I like to take a look at my balanced equation and whichever one has the coefficient of one, that's what I like to call X. So this is going to be two at equilibrium minus two X. This is X and this is X. Let's go ahead and set up our KC uh, so that we've got some direction to go. Fill in as much of your rice as you can. Make sure you set up your KC. At least if you're doing this, you're getting some amount of partial credit within the problem. Now you know AP is going to step you through these, but if you can start at the beginning and work to the end, you can follow each step in between as they're laid out for you. Now this is my unknown. Well, I need to know all of my values from the E row in order to calculate it. So there has to be some information for finding that X, and that information is right here in this statement. It says that 20% of the HI decomposed. So if I started with two molar, I'm losing 20% of that. So 20% is equal to 0 0.40 molar is my loss. That's how much decomposed, not how much remained. Remember, you have to be very careful with those words, but what my loss was. So that means that minus 0 0.40 is equal to 2x is the loss. So I can solve for x. x, therefore, has to equal 0 0.20. So now I know what this is. This is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.2, and this is 2x, remember. So this must be 1.6. Now I have all of my values to get Kc. And if we substituted all of those in, so if I put a 0.2 and a 0.2 and then a 1.6 squared, uh, you should get a Kc equal to 0 0.0156. Always double check my algebra there. I think I did that properly, but it never hurts to double check. Now, that wasn't too bad, but the question also asked us for Kp. What does Kp equal? Well, remember Kp is Kc times R, 0.0821 in this case, T to the delta N. Well, delta N for our reaction, these are all gaseous in this case. So I have a 1 plus 1 for my products. Remember, it's products minus reactants. There's only one reactant. It's gas, and that's a 2. And so delta N is equal to 0. 
So RT to the 0 is equal to 1. And so anything to the first power, remember, is equal to zero or to one. So anything to the zero power, excuse me, is equal to one. So that <laughs> tried to get a line there, but that that goes away, right? We don't need that. So what that means for us is that our um, KP and our KC are equal to one another. So that means KP is also equal to our two point or point oh one five six. Okay, let's go on to our next problem. Eight. Um, you do it eight is nitrogen and oxygen in a synthesis to form nitrogen monoxide and they are all gaseous phases in this case. Now this time I am given KP or we are given our KP value right here and we're asked for concentration. So this is slightly different, but the grid still works. Did we add volume to volume? No, we didn't. We are going to have a calculation to do here, but it's not a dilution. Listen, I'll forget my dilutions. That's why I keep reiterating it. I was making a key once and I forgot my dilutions. No stoichiometries, so we're going to be able to move into our equilibrium. But to do equilibrium, we need either partial pressures or molarities. Now, we're given moles of reactants and none of this, but we aren't given liters. Instead, we're given a total pressure of one atmosphere. So when I found this, I thought this would be a really good time to teach you one of the ways we can use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. Remember in this case, since these are the only two present, that the partial pressure of nitrogen plus the partial pressure of oxygen is going to equal our total pressure. That's one form of Dalton's Law. Well, in this case, we don't really know our partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen. Some of you may intuitively jump at it, but some won't. So I want to show you how we can or how we calculate that. What we can use is that our partial pressure of nitrogen is going to equal our mole fraction of nitrogen, and since we're given moles, we can get that times our total pressure. And our partial pressure of oxygen will equal our mole fraction of oxygen times the total pressure. So I can, I've got moles, so I can find mole fraction. Now I just have to find the individuals. So my mole fraction of nitrogen, I have 0.4 moles, 0 0.40 moles. Uh, we'll just give those zeros because we need a few more sig figs to play with anyway. Over 0.4 plus 0.4, the mole fraction's the part over the whole time, and that's my mole fraction of nitrogen. Well, that's actually my mole fraction of oxygen as well. So that means that my partial pressure of nitrogen is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.4 over 0.8 is 0.5 times 1. So my partial pressure of nitrogen is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, let's add an extra sig fig there, atmospheres. And that is also my oxygen. Now there was a faster way to get to that and you can come talk to me about it if you want to, but I wanted to teach you these formulas here, uh, how you can get to partial pressures if you know moles and you know a total pressure. Now, it asks to calculate the partial pressure of NO at equilibrium. So this is what was introduced. We are given KP is 0 0.050 and that's going to equal my partial pressure of NO squared. You know, I don't like that color. Let's see if this black looks a little better for you. Over my partial pressure of N2 times my partial pressure of O2. So if I want to find this, I have to be able to get to these as well. So let's take a look at our chart. I have to go to product because I have none. So I'm going to lose x, I'm going to lose x, and since this is a 2 to 1 mole ratio, 
I'm going to gain 2x. So I would have 0 0.50 minus x, 0 0.50 minus x, and 2x. Now I can plug this into here if I have that column. Since I know my KC, the only unknown would be x. So if I plug that in there, I'm just going to get the algebra started, and then I'm going to let you finish it. This would be 2x squared over 0 0.50 minus x squared. Now, if you notice, since both the numerator and the denominator are squared, you can take the square root of each side and that will help you avoid the quadratic equation or worse. By the way, you will not have to use the quadratic equation on AP questions. You will for some of the ones I come up with, just because they're hard to come up with otherwise, and we'll do that in class. Um, so I'm going to give you that much information, and then I'm going to give you the answers, and you should be able to come up with the partial pressure of nitrogen, again, that not so good color, is equal to the partial pressure of oxygen, and those are equal to 0 0.45 and my partial pressure of NO ends up to be 0 0.10, all in atmospheres. So if you're not getting these values, then that means we've got a little algebra lesson that we need to do here. And we can do that in class to help you out if you don't get those. So you want to make sure you try those. All right, we just have a few more problems to do, but I'm going to move on to the next video. So until then, this is hoping Santa was very good to you this year.